computer. We're not going to change computers. Also, please, if you're presenting, uh, our videographer at the back has asked that you try to talk into the microphone. This is getting recorded. Maybe the only chance that your project is going to get seen in a bigger world is to get recorded, get your audio captured. So please speak into the mic. Yeah. And we'll hit it off. Oh, you want me to hit it off? Yeah, yeah. start with your okay. team name. <clears throat> so our team, no surprise, we built something with, um, so we're team grandpas little bits. And uh, this is, and little bits, when you hear us talking about little bits, it's actually these, uh, these internet of, of things devices. So, so we built something. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, so our team is uh, grandpa's little bits. And, um, and so we built something um, um, that, about a scenario that's um, relevant in all our lives. We, um, there's elderly people in our lives that uh, we care about. Um, often, we, I know a couple that's alone, no kids, no family. Um, and, and we would call them every day, and we, 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 you know, we go out of our way to look after them because we, we care about them. And, um, but sometimes we'll call them up, and, and they, they can tell we're checking on them. And so then they get upset, right? They say, oh, I don't need to be checked on. You know, it's the whole balance of indivi being individual, um, but yet knowing that there's people there when you need them. So, <clears throat> so what we've built is a little bit device, which you'll see up here. So I'll let you talk about what we did. Okay. Um. I'm Ilko from the Netherlands. This is this I'm is Michael Mike from, from Vancouver. From Vancouver. Yeah. 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 Um, so we tried to uh, to capture the events from the little bits, and we store the events in a Google Fusion table. Yeah. That was new for us. Yeah. We manipulate the dates a little bit because the date format in UTC or not. So we created a workbench for collecting the events. Yeah. So these are like motion events. So whenever Grandpa, <coughs> we call it Grandpa's little bits. But so whenever Grandpa moves. Um, in the kitchen, uh, an alert is sent to FME, and we write that timestamp in the database, so we know the last time movement was detected in the kitchen. Yeah. So yeah, so it's not a camera because we don't want cameras because cameras are kind of weird, right? Like we don't want cameras in people's houses. I don't want cameras in my house. Grandpa doesn't want cameras in his house. So it's just purely motion. Okay. I'm just gonna interrupt for one sec. There's 16 presentations in 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, so, so what happens now is, and then we have, so every time Grandpa moves, I'm um, in the kitchen. I'm vent is sent. We write to a Google Fusion table, and then we have a scheduled job that runs uh, periodically, and um, say at 10 a.m. And um, if Grandpa, if there's been act activity within a certain time frame, we uh, or no activity within a certain time frame, we get an email and, and what a Slack and alert. a Slack message saying, hey, you know, uh, poke Grandpa. Which is uh, basically give him a call, you know, reach out to Grandpa, make sure <coughs> everything's okay. So uh, we uh, we have a button to simulate the uh, motion sensor because there's probably going to be too much motion in the room, so it would keep going off. So anyway, uh, so we hit the button that simulates that Grandpa has moved, and uh, so the next time it goes through and checks. It will say, okay, we're fine. <laughs> yep. uh, obviously, Grandpa hasn't uh, been moving much in the last few hours. <laughs> um, Grandpa slept. <laughs> um, he slept, and he just... No, 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 no. We have an idle detector workspace, and it just... It gets the, the latest movement, and it uh, uh, um, calculates the difference with the current uh, time. Yeah. So actually, <coughs> he should be moving now, uh, yeah. Mike. Can yeah. you press the button? I can. So that... Idle detector works with a, 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 a threshold of about a minute. Yeah. So we hope now that the event went into the Google Fusion table. It just is a big table, and we pull that table. And when we see a difference, more than a minute, idleness, then there should be a message here. Okay. So. so. Yeah. And that's kind of, <coughs> and that's and that's the idea. Yeah. That's the idea, but now it should work. Uh. <laughs> yeah. It'll work. It'll work. We know it works. Grandpa's yeah. okay. How long did that take you guys to do that? Um, we started from scratch. <coughs> so what, what, for the two hours? Hour and a half? Uh, well, we had to have pizza and beer. Too. We had to have pizza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was built under the influence of alcohol? <laughs> it was. Yes. Yeah. It was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we cheated a little bit because the, the channel we ran into oh, alteration hell, as we call it. Yeah. So it took uh, 15 minutes a day. 
extra. After, yeah, that's after, after the time. After, yeah, so after so, the beer. Yeah, so that okay. was kind of a cheat. So. Okay, thanks very much, Great, guys. guys. Thank you. I'm gonna put up. Uh, yeah, clap again. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna put up the link to vote, but the voting is not open yet. But just if anybody's gonna leave the room, um, you might want to know what that link is. So where will I put that? Can you put sound element in? There is a video because you want to watch that movie. Okay, yeah, I'll check that. I'll check that. Yeah. 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 Oh, you guys want to go now? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Okay. Unless um, you have somebody else to go. Can I do, where's our AV guys? Can, can I do sound out of this machine? Yeah, Please, yeah. Um, so that video, and you sent me, there it is, got it. And then the movie, it's the first presentation. That's this link? Yeah. Okay, I'll put up the, I'll put up the uh, voting link after this one. So if you leave, please come back and find out the voting link. Uh, where's my sign? There we go. You stop. Yeah, messed it up. So Let me just, one sec, guys. Just put that down. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, yeah. One more. One, oh, over here, yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, Grandpa moved. Yeah, he moved. <laughs> 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 wake him up. Grandpa's okay. That Thank is a relief. So Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We got seriously worried. Uh, where do I go here? Presentation view? Where's presentation? Oh. That one? Or? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, so, guys. Uh, yeah, we had this idea that we wanted to check if a room is occupied or if it's free when you're, like, in the office and... Oh, there's an empty room. I just take it, and then a, sudden, a couple of moments later, another one came. And, oh, we have booked this room. So uh, it's a real uh, like business case. Uh, and this was for our team, Team Bookies. It was me, Anton, and Jan. Uh, and Henrik, actually, he had to go with the plane home. Uh, and Naraman uh, also helped us, and some other guys from Sveco. Yeah, I think he's in another session now. <laughs> so, um, so. How, quickly, how can you quickly check if a room is occupied and then book it? Uh, so our solution was to first generate a QR code with an URL uh, so we can pass it to FME server, then read the QR code to see if the, meet, if the room is occupied or if it's free, and then if it's free, book it. So we have two like main uh, workspaces. The first one uh, checks to Office 365. We will use Jan's... Uh, Great uh, Office uh, 365 transformer. Uh, we use FME Cloud for that, and then we generate the QR code so we can just tape it up on the conference rooms. And we had to create one extra one because we had no nothing that could read what was in the calendar. I had only the ones made that would put things in the calendar, so we had to fiddle a little bit with that. Yeah, yeah. So and the other one just reads the QR code, send it, send it to FME server checks the Office 365, and then we use data streaming. So we stream back a HTML page back to the phone. And then if it's free, you can then resubmit again to book it. And it will go uh, to, to Office 365. So now I will try to make a, a live demo. But we also have a great movie, so we have. But maybe we should just go for the movie. Yeah, I think so. So I will. Yeah. I hope we didn't I, we destroy a million in dollar in industry with this because we only worked uh, about two hours on this. <laughs> so and we heard all the stories of other people. Ah, we built this Greek system. I don't think it's the this. sound is on. And with the level change, like, oh, it's sound. There's no sound. I think it's Hang on, let me just. Um, I can think you put I the sound the on? Thing. Try again? It, I think it's mine. Hang on one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is exactly what it is. If I just plug this back in, I think it prompts me. That one. Yep. So now. That sounds encouraging. Should we back her up? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> So let's see if the room is occupied or if it's free. Let's scan the QR code. Oh, the room is free. Yeah. So I, I want to book the room. 
Oh, seems like I have booked room. Does it show up in the calendar? One second. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. yeah. If I reload it. No. It is occupied. It's occupied. Sweet. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love the I love the hub, the hub of activity in the background sound there. That was fantastic. Yes, uh, oh, and what, just one question: Where where did you get that transformer that Jan made? Where did you find that? Uh, I had them on my machine. Oh. I, 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 I did not put them on because there are a couple of things. Like for example, what we had as an issue is that um, it's built for European time, okay. and then uh, mm. you know it's all in there in the API for for Microsoft. But we had to fiddle actually to make it actually work. On that. So, uh, but once I clean them up, I will put them there. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Okay, so just give us a sec here, folks, to switch over your stuff. Which? You guys get. What was it you gave me? This is what I can't remember. Or something with the. I put it on a folder called uh, Cheap Restaurant Finder or something. Oh, yeah, that is here. I saw it. That's all you need? Yep. All right. As long as the work bench helps you. All right. So, uh, hi, guys. I'm from uh, Montreal, Quebec. I'm from CAE. Uh, and uh, I've been doing the hackathon with my colleagues. Uh, I'm gonna just do a quick introduction. The, uh, uh, the goal for the, uh, the app that we construct here, the script we construct was to, uh, when you're hungry, you're in a rush, you don't want to go in your uh, Google uh, Maps and then try to find some restaurant around you because it's gonna propose you know, the best restaurant, best voted restaurant and so on. So uh, the goal was to find the cheapest restaurant around you. <laughs> Why the cheapest? Because you all guys know that uh, there's stuff to be done with money better than food, like beer. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, basically, we, we had some fun with the Google API uh, yesterday, and I'm going to uh, let my colleague just present the script uh, quickly and do a quick demo. Okay, okay. so uh, what we did is we looked at, you know, what's an API that can help us find information about restaurants, and... Uh, the, probably the, the biggest one we found first was Google Places. Um, so uh, we were able to use this API and we, uh, we used some transformers. We created uh, a prompt. So we prompt you to, for your zip code. Um, and then we feed your zip code into a geocoder. And uh, from that, we're actually using another Google API behind the scenes in the geocoder to get, to get the actual coordinates there. Then we take those coordinates and we pass it to the Google Places API in an HTTP caller, which we've set up to pass a number of things. And we also pass the keyword of the type of restaurant you want. So we give it a few different things, where we are, what kind of restaurant we want. Um, and we, we say we only want ones that are open because the worst thing is when you find a good restaurant and then it turns out it's closed. So no one wants that. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, and then what we do is when we get that back, uh, we get JSON back and we use some of our uh, JSON tools in FME, the fragmenter and then the flattener to parse our results. And then we do some, uh, we actually make a second request based on the results to get even more info. And that's how we get the info about how much, how pricey the restaurant has been rated. And uh, then we do some filtering to filter out, I think we sort. Um, so we get the cheapest ones and then we do some filtering to make sure we, they are actually have good data. And uh, then in the end, uh, we actually turn those back into points. And we're using our HTML report generator to make a cool little report of, of the uh, findings for our, of restaurants for our zip code. So if I just click, I'm actually, oh, no. I, oh, I'm just running. I did, I, I'm going to stop it because I didn't click. I should really know this better. This one, so I'm going to click run and prompt. And so uh, here you see the prompts we created. So you can pick the type of restaurant. So which one do you think we should uh, do, Marco? Maybe in the end. We'll do Indian. Uh, and then here the uh, zip code. This is, yeah. Uh, I'll let you yeah. So we'll find our zip code here. <laughs> oh, you know it. Okay. Guess what? He knows it. 
V. And we want that on the, uh, maybe on the desktop or something. <coughs> so it just gets uh, a few seconds to run. And here we know where to eat. I want to just review the team names for the voting. So you guys were called? The, the Cheap Restaurant Finder. The Cheap Restaurant Finder, OK. <laughs> and we had Grandpa's Little Bits. And um, yeah, you guys were called? Rastervarian. Rast, Rastervarian? Rastaf no, no, the uh, book, room booking. Right, I have that link for that. Actually, can we, we're just gonna do one pause because I want to put up, before we lose people, I'd like to put up the URL for the voting. It's not open yet, but if people leave, it's really important that we vote. There's prizes, and of course, the top prize is you are going to be featured on the FME blog, right, Tiana? Yeah. Yes, awesome. Okay, so what's the URL, Jen? Uh, S-L-I. dot D-O. Okay, so take that down if you're planning on leaving anytime soon. That's where the voting's gonna be. Seen some pretty good ones already, haven't we? Okay, so let's pass over to the next guys. And you guys are team? F-A-M-E-M-E-M. Oh, right, I knew I wouldn't be able to pronounce that. F-A-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M-E-M. Okay, so you're, where's your YouTube video? I think I put it down. Can you see it there? I think I have a link to it. Oh, there it is. So we're going to have, oh, mute the sound? Uh, it wasn't Take it away. supposed that we recorded the sound, but we did anyway, so. Um, hello, everyone. We're team FME Mune, together with Mark Ireland and Joanna. We've been developing a game, a web-based game, so that we all could play together all from uh, across the globe. So the idea was that you landed on a uh, foreign planet with nothing there except for one very important uh, mineral, ephememium. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> when you get there, you want to gather as much resources of ephememium as possible. So the idea is that you start with a certain amount that you just find on the location where you land, and then that you go look for more ephememium throughout the game. It's a step-based game. Everybody plays at the same time. You've got, for example, half a minute to uh, decide what your next move will be. A move could be uh, survey the land, what you're standing on, move one place, north, uh, south, east, or west, and extract ephemium minerals from the ground. So what we did is we uh, created a little web page that's linked with um, FME server and a database in the background. Basically, you start a new game by clicking on the restart button uh, on the top right. And then you just click the buttons that are over there, and you will see um, we have actually got it working for one player. So the basic structure is there, but now we can, of course, uh, start making it a bit bigger. And for one player, it actually works. So we are quite <laughs> happy with that, because we did it, we did it in. You didn't say that with conviction. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we weren't sure that it would work within the given fun. amount of time. So basically, you will see that there's a purple triangle. That's the spot where the player is right now. And for, you see it's moving around, serving the area, because every time you survey, it costs some ephememium. Extracting costs a bit more of ephememium, so you only want to extract when you're uh, certain that you can, well, reach a lot of ephememium out of it. <laughs> well, and that's basically it. So the, the, the basic is there. Now we can start uh, making it better and uh, making it bigger. Thank you.
So that was Team FME Memium. Should be a disclaimer. Nothing that shows up on the YouTube side is, is, uh, is my fault, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that was great. Thanks. Uh, okay, who, who's next? We've got an open slot now. Um, uh, let's have Leas. Leas, come on up. Steve, or Steve, you need to run soon, or? Steve, you need to run soon, or? You're okay? Okay, so we'll take Leas. Um, and what did you send me again? You sent me a PPT. Yep, and the video was, where was the video? It was a file. MP4. This, MP4, this okay, yep. big yep. sucker. Thank you. Oh, no, that's a link actually, hang on. I think I downloaded the file. Oh, there you go. No, I think I downloaded the file though in advance. It's a big, yeah, that, is that it? FB writer. Yep. yep. Yeah, so it's already Hi. Done. One second. Good uh, morning, and my name is Lias. One second, one second. I just want to get out of your way. I'm so excited. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want the PowerPoint open? Uh, yes, please. I think I had that open. Wait, I think it's. Yes. Didn't I have that open? Yeah, there we go. Tonk and. Sorry. I'll start with the video. <laughs> the video. <laughs> I wasn't really listening. Uh, where did that go? We are yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. The big idea is uh, to be able to read and write from Facebook. That would be a nice new reader and writer, okay? So you, we look at uh, Facebook as a database, basically. It's, uh, you have to send some uh, uh, statements through uh, some API to be able to uh, retrieve data from there. Um, uh, the most uh, important thing to know is that uh, there is uh, an API called the Graph API, which is provided by Facebook. And they have also the Graph, a uh, Graph API Explorer, which is something like um, a place to, to play around with the, all the statements. So in here, <coughs> uh, what I was uh, trying to do, or what I did, was to extract data in JSON. Uh, those are all the um, uh, data for earthquakes, all right? The notifications for earthquakes, sorry, notifications for earthquakes, and try to push that into Facebook. So uh, in here, <coughs> just very quickly, this is uh, just to show you that it works. Um, the, um, one of the, uh, the issues that uh, you will face when you do this is that the token uh, that you have, uh, you need to, uh, re, uh, to, to get a new token every two months to be able to read and write uh, to Facebook. So the idea is uh, here to show that, well, uh, there is only uh, one workspace. All right, so it's below five workspaces. Uh, sorry, well, one transformer is below five uh, transformers for sure. All right, so Dan is happy. Um, <clears throat> just, just to inspect the, uh, the data, I'll just go forward. Oops. And you can see that this is the data extracted uh, online. This is JSON. And um, the workspace starts running, extracting the data, and pushing the data into Facebook. It's a group in Facebook, a test group. And um, you can see that here, this is the, uh, the previous messages. I'll just update that. And uh, you can see that these are the latest earthquakes in the world. All right, so just to, to go back to the, uh, I close this, and I go back to the PowerPoint. This is the first slide, right? Okay, so this is how it looks like on the Graph API, all right, the interface. Anybody can do that, it's free. Um, just to show that you have to create uh, some uh, project or uh, you need to, to have a key and a token and so on. Uh, to tell you the truth, I've been inspired by the REST API from FME, since FME servers. When I learned how to do that, everything else was easy on the web, all right? Uh, this is uh, the reader that I've created. This is, uh, you know, when you send requests to, uh, uh, um, to the Facebook, to the Graph API, what happens is that uh, you receive back the data in a JSON format. So this is the reader part. And this is just an example where I have retrieved the users of a group that I administer. Of course, you need to be administrator to be able to uh, uh, download all this information. And uh, this is the one um, transformer workspace. Uh, I don't want to count the creator, if you don't mind. Okay, I'll cheat a bit. 
Um, this is uh, the results for after uh, pushing the data into Facebook. All right. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lais. That was super cool. I mean, in fact, like for emergency response, these things like Facebook and Twitter are, are becoming really, really important. Okay, so uh, just, uh, mm. the, reason, the, man, uh, the reason why I, I decided to go for Facebook is because I was working on Twitter, and there are too many restrictions on Twitter. So this may be a better way to So we'll just take a minute here. Casual changeover. Um, what did you send me again? Oh, what was your team name again, Laius? Uh, myself. Myself? FB writer, that was the team name if you want to vote. Um, what did you send me? I sent you an email. Mm. And did it have an attachment? Or? Yeah, it was an attachment to Dropbox links, but you can call, you can. No, I think I got it down. As well. I think I brought it down. I'm just trying to remember what it was. It's just a, okay. I don't like showing my email in front of a whole room of people, so I'm just going to turn that off for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stand in front of the projector. <laughs> No, not that much. So it's probably Reddit. So it's like, yeah. It would have been a big, you had the attachment and it was like huge too. I think I feel like I downloaded a big attachment. The guy's behind me already if you want to swap. Okay, the, the two. and then maybe just. I'll do it again. Email something. me again? Just yeah. the link. Okay, so the guy's behind you. So who did that mean? Okay, <laughs> sorry. I think I had that, but I. Yeah. Do we have, wait. Uh, he sent you an email this time. Uh, oh, yeah, Martin uh, screenshots. Yeah, yeah, That's you there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I should be one first. Yeah, I, I didn't have time to put in PowerPoint. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Um, our goal was to uh, produce our own background maps in Inspector using FME. And in true hacker style, we used a blog post <laughs> on, using, uh, uh, on building a WMS server uh, with some blog posts from a couple of months ago, I think. So we Took that, gutted out actually the, the special light stuff in the middle, and I don't have pictures. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, it's me. No, I was the one that disabled it. Uh, uh, right. There you go. Actually, probably the worst workspace I built in years, because I simply took something from safe, uh, cut out the middle, and put in a geotiff. So, uh, and then started clicking the buttons uh, to make it all work again. This is the get capabilities uh, request. This is the get map request. Uh, also just gutted it and yeah, start uh, make, uh, trying to make it work. And actually at 12 o'clock last night, I finally came out of reprojection hell. <laughs> <laughs> Which kept me, this, this part of the team was uh, in reprojection hell. Uh, well, you were on trying to fix something else. Oh no, uh, let's yeah. do it here. I put it on uh, on uh, cloud. Here is on cloud. I mean, everybody knows what, how it works. And then I, uh, this is what I used actually to start it off. And now, now you do the your talk. Yeah, we had a, a slightly different issue ourselves. Um, after we had all this pretty much working within the regular two-hour time that was allotted, <laughs> um, we had this genius idea you know, we should do something really funny. We hide the lizard somewhere near the convention center. And um, we face this rather unique issue that I'm sure everybody will encounter one day, and that's how do you georeference a lizard? So uh, we started uh, extracting bounds and this and that, and it all worked finally. We had them all in the right place. And I kept reminding uh, myself of Chris Hadfield, how he says, envision your failures. And I'm thinking like, wow, do we ever do a good job of that right now? <laughs> <laughs> but then, then on the other hand, I figured Albert. The beer was good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The beer was good. The pizza was even better. And the beer helped, that's for sure. <laughs> if you have issues with developers and drinking beer, look up Balmer's Law, you know, the old CEO of Microsoft. He'll explain it all to you. It's all great. Huh. Um, also, the other thing that kept coming up, we talked about, like, you know, how Edison was asked about how do you do... Um, how many times did it take you to build a light bulb? 
And he said, a thousand times. And the guy says, so you failed a thousand times making it. And he says, no, I learned 999 ways how to not build it. We learned 999 ways how to not do your reference a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so and, uh, unfortunately, our other team member is not here. This is, of course, Martin. I'm uh, Michael. I work for the city of Richmond, so I'm a local boy. Martin uh, is from, uh, the from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands, yes. Which yeah. also explains the reprojection hell, because actually <laughs> we have two corner systems that I work with the daily. And it's, here's it a bit different. So uh, Yes, well, uh, UTM was a different system. concept for uh, him and I tie with the other team uh, member, <laughs> and then we had Gerhard, which is not here either. No, no. Yeah. Oh, but uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Gerhard from Safe Gerhard Fishing. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually, I got things working. I was expecting data from them. The, yeah, so I got data from them, and it was not the way it was. <laughs> I, we had uh, agreed. So I had data failure as well this morning because they should send me one file with a lizard on the building, and I had <laughs> a lizard and a building. Yes. So <laughs> the, the lizard was very <laughs> elusive as it turns well, out. So. Eventually, <laughs> I got this. I mean, it, it worked. I, I didn't think I could show it here because my password for my from a cloud and all is in this. It means yes. hackathon. But it really it works. It gives yes. uh, it gives you a nice PNG on where you go to. I said I use a creator to make a geometry and then simply it. Uh, this is the uh, the uh, geotiff uh, the SPNG served by WMS. And actually, I think uh, now when I got the hang of it, you can improve it by uh, making your own sort of tiles, uh, making making zoom levels, and pre-processing the data and everything. Uh, I now know how it's going to work. And now I have one <laughs> geotiff without a lizard. Without because, a lizard. Uh, I could also add different layers, but not this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, really made the goal of trying to get a lizard as a second layer merged on top of that, uh, that man. No, no. no. <laughs> we we have to so. draw the line somewhere. The <laughs> there was no more beer, so being from the Netherlands and being formerly German, we needed the extra incentives. <laughs> so, well, we yeah. finally made it, can't show you, and we had a lot of fun doing it. We did so. It was a great, great thing. Thank you so much. We seem to 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 our eight. Oh. Right, we are a team 40 plus, and I don't know who came up with that name, but thank you so much for that. <laughs> Did you say team 50 plus? Is that? No, no, no. I don't like you. <laughs> okay, um, I think class, or, sorry, or. I sent them something else. To, and when, and that was just roughly when? Sorry, I'm just. Uh, ah, okay, so give me a sec here. Four hours of sleep. I first started with the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we got to find your thing first. I don't actually see, oh wait, hang on. I'm not at the top. Oh, there's Steve's, yeah. which is good. Class slides. Do you need both decks? Uh, well, th this one is the open, open, ah, right. open format, and this one, I converted it from LibreOffice. Maybe it works. Here we go. Works. This is looking promising. Yep, we got her. Let's start that off for you. And what's your team name, Klaus? Uh, team uh, 3D Tetris. 3D Tetris. Yeah. F5, I guess. I think it's oh, just hit. Er, escape. Yeah. F5. Why is it so? Well, you're already on both of you have this right side. OK. okay. Weird. Okay. Oh, well, let's go. Lost. <laughs> we lost her display. Again. That was me. Yeah, I first started uh, out with a point cloud, but then uh, there was uh, that much noise. I uh, simply grabbed uh, an LOD2 uh, model uh, of this convention center. Uh, from Google Warehouse, so uh, SketchUp format, uh, and this is how it this is how it looks from the side. Uh, there was a little problem because, uh, well, my my idea was to uh, to make a uh, well a physical 3D puzzle out of it. Uh, yeah, but uh, if you look from uh, below, you see it's still open. There are gaps, and it took me too much time to uh, fix that. So it's now only a PowerPoint pre presentation with the proof of concept. Uh, going back to the other original view, which I did, uh, what I did was uh, creating a, an oriented uh, bounding box around uh, 
the convention center and then extruded it until, well, somewhere above the height, maybe with a, a good interval, uh, a, a rounded interval, let's say, because then uh, I actually um, will slice the model up uh, if, if the LOD uh, model is a real solid, then it's possible, but, but now it isn't. So it's basically, these are the edges of all, all the cubes in, uh, in, the, in the bounding box. And uh, those cubes I will use to uh, cut up the model. And um, basically, uh, you, have, you have seen overhangs. The, the roofs are overhanging, and you can not uh, use them as a piece in the in the 3D Tetris puzzle. So uh, uh, a later at a later stage, within two weeks, I will post it to the hub. Uh, I make uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll add some uh, some um, well uh, uh, well uh, I'm, I make it that way that the overhangs are really connected to another block, so they won't tip over and and so on. So it's it's kind of uh, it will be a really uh, uh, dynamic uh, workspace where you put in a, a valid LOD model or whatever model which is a solid. It pulls it through. It dynamically cuts up the uh, the pieces. It dynamically make makes a well uh, a random order or randomly uh, dissolves the cubes together. So you will have a very difficult, uh, <laughs> difficult puzzle because one of the parameters will also be how how small or big the cubes will uh, will be. So yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you. The team name again was Team Three D Tetris. Team Three D Tetris. So I'm just going to pop the voting slide back up. Um, again, that won't be live yet. I don't think, right, Jen? It won't be live till we have everything entered, but that's where we're going to be voting if you have to come and go. Also, if you, if you want to present and you, you're, you know, it's taking a bit of time to get to everybody, you can come back later. So we're here till 12.30. And one other thing I want to say in the interlude, thanks again to Sueco. If you weren't there last night, uh, Sueco was a co-sponsor of this event, and the, lot, lots of the Sueco guys helped out. There's Michael, Neriman, who else? Who's Sueco here? Put up your hands, please. Yeah, so thanks again to the Sueco guys. Hmm? Oh, yeah, there's lots. It's okay. We've got an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So, Steve, oh, I got to, yeah. going to hide my screen again. <laughs> We're going to get, actually, what I should do is use my other email account. Yeah, I just, I'm not an extend guy. I'm really not. <laughs> Okay, perfect. I saw it light up, yeah. So let's. Ah, oh, there we go. Great. So I'll just download that. Uh, that. What's your team name? I don't even know if I have a team name. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry. It's the bo I'm the boring one. It's coming pretty fast. It's okay. Um, yeah. I'll just call myself Team Waffles. Team Waffles? This is. That's who this is, yeah. Team Waffles about to come up. We're just, just a couple minutes here. Got to keep the casual atmosphere of the hackathon, so we're not going to have all these smooth transitions. It's all kind of fun and casual. Like I say, we're here till 12.30, so if you need to come and go, feel free. I think some teams are still working until the deadline. Well. <laughs> yeah. The deadline that was 9 a.m. this morning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you may have said this to me already, but I, we didn't remember what it was called, actually. I, yeah, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known what it was called either. I'm sorry. It didn't have my name in it, so it would have been a bit generic. It wasn't big data, was it? No. No. OK. So anyway, I think we're almost there. Yeah. We are. Hi. Just work us in if you can. Pardon me? Team Bridge. Team Bridge, work you in? OK, I will. Yeah. And we put this back. Yeah, maybe I should go to the six. Um, no, I'm not right now. But uh, 
like a live demo. Do it. No, I'm just kidding. Close that. Looks promising. I think I did hit the slide play button. Okay. Hello, everyone. You've now reached the boring part because there, I actually followed the theme of the hack, <laughs> which was Earth, Earth observation monitoring. Um, I took it upon myself. There's been a there's no NetCity of four reader in Safe Software. So what I did was I found a bit of Python code and shoved it in the front of a, a feature reader to back save a version four to a three, which then it goes eight x out, and then you can read it as a three and send it through into your FME stuff. So. Uh, second slide, FME hack. I don't know if we had a hashtag or anything, but that's, I was having fun. Waffles. Hashtag now. Yeah, hashtag now. The reason why waffles, okay, and Belgian waffles. Are my friends here still? Yeah, anyway. Uh, NetCDF data is both just a 2D, you can think of it as a raster form, but it's very, very deep. It can actually store other metrics or uh, time, all sorts of stuff. But you can see in the little lower picture, it's a single raster, but then the pixel element is very tall and you can store lots of stuff in it. And it's done that with nested list arrays. So that's how FME can uh, seize it. There we go, another hashtag. <laughs> Big impact. Reason why, um, I have a family connection to a satellite that's in space, been collecting for two years. They're collecting atmospheric carbon dioxide data. NetCDF 4, so I was like, oh, I really wanna crack this. Um, <laughs> But it's really cool because it, it sends, uh, it's like a beam and I have to stand here so I'm recorded and wave my arms around. But it, it actually, it's a single beam, like a stack of pixels, hence waffles, raster, now pancakes, hashtag pancakes. So now um, what we're doing is just trying to get this data in the workspace. Um, creators don't count, Python callers do everything. Um, feature readers read the data and then out it comes. So the code is in there. I can't push this to the hub because you need to uh, you actually need two libraries, NumPy and NetCDF4. So thanks, Carlos, if he's here. Pi, Python team, probably in the doctor's office. <laughs> anyway, we helped crack it. Uh, 24 lines of code, something silly, anyway. Pip and, you know, pip and saw a few things, add your system path, and then save the data out, and then read it in. That's all we accomplished. There's your data. Carlos Brown and Carlos. Yeah. Team name again was? Team Waffles. Team Waffles. And you know, this is super cool. I don't know if people know this, but a lot of SAFE customers have been asking us about NetCDF format, for, NetCDF4, including Meteo Suisse, the Swiss, Swiss um, meteorological agency. Who else, Dean? We, there's a lot of people want this, so yeah. great. super cool. I didn't understand that. That was an Australian, sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, sorry, Brett. Yeah. So who, someone just came, oh, Reed, do you wanna, do you guys wanna come up? Yeah. Only this machine, this was a strict rule, I'm sorry. Or is that, can you guys work it, figure it out to send it to me? Is that gonna be possible? You don't have to go up now, but. Um, pardon me? It's ken.bragg at safe.com. Sorry, I'm kind of being strict about that just because of the time. Um, anyone else ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Do we have uh, our turn? Send it to you. I think so. Do you know if, if, you're, if you have Flash enabled in your Chrome browser? No. Okay, all videos in, in Flash. I'm pretty sure not. What, uh, I forget what it was called, what you sent me. Um, Let me just order this by name. It's not here, right? I think it's not here. I think it was simply called FME Hackathon. Actually, no, I'm here. Maybe it just got the mail. When did you email it? Like an hour ago, I guess. An hour ago, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oops, what happened there? Hang on, I just want to. Okay, so we got a link. What that is. is. Yeah. So what's your team name, guys? Uh, code for Pizza. Code for, call for pizza? Code. Or? Code for pizza, oh, it was code for pizza, all right, <laughs> yeah.
Okay, so uh, yeah, our uh, initial mis mission statement was to use a, a Microsoft Cognitive Services API. Um, so to see if it can detect natural disasters from photos on Twitter, Flickr, and other social media, um, like volcanoes, flood, fire, and, and so on. Um, so we uh, tried out the, the Cognitive API and, and gave it a run with some, some test images. And so what we got from an instance from this image was uh, results like sunset, building, street, sun, night. So I think that's not really, that not really worked out, as you can see <laughs> clearly. <laughs> uh, or captions like sunset over a fire. I mean, if you build a really, really big fire, maybe that's true, but. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we thought about uh, modify the, the task a little bit. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we thought about mapping emotions because we thought that this API is really good at uh, detecting um, the emotion from the facial expressions. So we uh, thought we will give it a try and just collect some, some images from the web um, with a geolocation and then send it to this API and just put that on a map with FME. So um, yeah, we thought that was something that we could accomplish in quite a short time and yeah. All right, what you can see, for example, here is an uh, example of the API. So you can just upload a picture, and on the right you can see uh, different scores, for example, for anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, and so on. So it's basically just a, a value between zero and one. And um, yeah, we just included that in our workspace. We got the pictures from Flickr and Twitter, sent it to the Microsoft API, and then used our own map client, um, map apps ETL to um, display all of this data in real time. So basically, we try to make it a dynamic application. And um, yeah, that's a workspace a little bit simplified. Um, <laughs> tweet streamer uh, to get everything in real time, do a little bit of complex stuff. Um, HTTP caller to yeah, get the Microsoft service up and running. And then again, a lot of complex stuff. <laughs> And then we are sending everything out with a WebSocket sender and uh, just see if the demo is working. I'm really ashamed that we have a Flash application uh, on a tech conference, but it was simply the first uh, screen recording tool we could see, uh, could find. So um, let's see if it will work. All right, it looks good. So it's our map application. And uh, as you can see, after quite some time, smileys will pop in, either for sad smileys or positive ones. So, um. <laughs> yeah, Vancouver's happy. <laughs> yeah, Vancouver's happy, so that's good, I guess. That's it's not really Vancouver. Ah, oh, there's Vancouver, <laughs> and it's also happy, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, back to our slide. Uh, yeah, so a challenge was uh, Microsoft API only uh, does 20 requests per minute, so we have to get more one, uh, money involved, uh, or a decelerator. <laughs> Really uh, nice transformer. And yeah, Twitter and Flickr, we just need to figure out which terms to actually use to get good pictures, but that's basically what we uh, did. And yeah, it was pretty easy using FME, and uh, the recognition API just needs to be uh, robust enough for the task. So uh, emotions, pretty good. Natural disasters, mm, not so much. <laughs> All right, thanks for your attention. <laughs> And again, our team name is Code for Pizza. Code for Pizza, nice. <laughs> and then those that were on the FME World Tour this year may have participated in an interactive activity we did, again, with the Microsoft Cognitive Services API. And there is a transformer on the FME Hub for that. Did you use that transformer? No. No, we did it from <laughs> scratch, and these are hardcore guys. Maybe I saw some for points down for using Flash. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, the complex stuff is basically just uh, exploding JSON, exploding XML, uh, renaming attributes and stuff like that. So all the boring part you don't really want to show. So basically everything is happening in the HTTP caller, WebSocket Sender, and, and so on. All right. Great. Sandra, I have your stuff, I think. Do you want to? Yeah. You yeah, good to go? Do oh, you guys are together, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. OK. So hopefully. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to. Um, what's this little oh. blue thing going here? I have no idea. So you can do yours first. So you guys sent, what did, was it you sent me again? I have it. I just Fire, zip. 
thing? That, uh, right. that one. Okay. And then mine was in your Slack. Does anybody know what this blue box is that's on my screen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a TARDIS. <laughs> it's trying to land. Uh, Uh, what is it? It's something for like either Windows and uh, hearing impairment. Yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? How do I turn that off? Accessibility. Yeah. It's an accessibility tool, yes. Yeah. Okay, so Dean. Yeah. They're a bit Slack older already, right? Yeah. There, that's it. That one. Oh my god, this blue thing is driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing. So, somebody's hacking your computer. Okay, so open yeah, this up? Yeah, open yeah. that up. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually, hang on, I'm not in my thing. Here, I'll let you, you drive. So, we're, <laughs> I'll just put that in. Where is all the other stuff? I like having my Slack in front of an audience just about as much as I like showing my yeah, email. <laughs> the box is getting bigger. It's getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys start it, and then I will. Why don't you guys go first? So we're the Rastafarians. Yep. Yeah, although I don't know, maybe a bit hair challenged to be calling us as that. But <laughs> <laughs> you guys can start. We started off with, I'll just open. We started off with trying to do a lens function, and then I had to. My, my ride was leaving, so I said, okay, my Part B is going to be working on a heat map, so we'll see how far they got on the lens function stuff, with a bit of help from Dimitri, I'll have to say. And then we also had Matt and uh, who else? Um, I guess and, uh, Thomas, Th Thomas from, yeah. from uh, Axman, who were participating too. Um, so um, stats, yeah. point cloud stat rasterizer? That's the thing. Yeah. That we ended up calling it. Um, no, that, that one we didn't use. Um, yeah, so uh, the idea was to have like a, like a uh, moving window analysis, basically. And Dimitri already thought of something really simple. Um, that is to just offset a raster. Uh, like if you have like a, a three by three window, so you just offset the raster in each direction, one pixel, and then you smash the whole thing together and uh, well, he was doing something with a point cloud, so we also went that direction. But he said, like, yeah, from then I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we should just run. He had just had some experiment. Yeah, so the idea is now that we have now implemented a median filter over a, a very noisy image. Um, and uh, does it work? Something we'll see what happens. Do you have a screenshot? Did something pop up? Or? No, there's lots of red and the log. Oh, well, maybe. Oh, it's trying to find we something. Trying to find the image. Yeah, the image is, yeah. You need to, uh, it was in some other folder before, I guess. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> is it, was it in the original stuff you sent me? It's probably there. Where, is this thing yeah, off the it's, desktop? It, I zipped it in the same thing, so it should oh, be no. in, the, in the same folder as the. Um, as this. At this, so this path above. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this path. Yeah, yeah, that path. It's right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try that again. So advanced. Yes. Okay. Control piece. There that's, it is. That's yeah. it. Spatial so noise ship. Yeah. Or a noisy ship. <laughs> Even though it's a sail ship, it's noisy. Okay. Blah blah blah. blah. So it should show what. So it's basically offsetting, and what it's doing is it's, what we're doing is normally a lens is let's say a three by three lens is you want to know what the pixels are all around your central pixel, and then that somehow will influence your recomputation value, and because we don't have a lens function, uh, you know we kind of got this idea part you know from Dimitri. What you do is basically you make a nine band stack. So you, take, you, you figure out what the values are all around you, and then you save it, you offset, and then you basically bring it all back together. And then, so if you click on one of these pixels, 
This is the noisy one. Mm -hmm. That's the noisy one? So it's just RGB, okay. Yeah, this and is then, RGB. Right? The only thing is we needed to, to make it grayscale. Well, it was already grayscale, but this is uh, the median filter applied. Everybody go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's not, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> although we're depending a bit on the raster mosaic or because yeah. for the math, although I didn't no, have no, a version. No, no, it's, it's no longer uh, oh, it's you're no not longer using in that? there. Because that was the thing, the raster mosaic, it doesn't have a median. It's only has an, it's a, that's a low-hanging fruit, oh. I think, there for the developers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it only has an average and a max and a, and a Oh, min, so you guys so. went through point cloud or what'd you do? Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, we yeah, it's, it was only point cloud, and then we used the the point cloud tiler or, and sorter, uh, the, the splitter. We use the sorter. Yeah, we sorter, sorter first. So we do X Y Z. Yeah. So we can sort. So together. this is how you're doing and here. Then to knock the first five off, four off, and then every nine point cloud expression to get our median. So we had now a sorted order know. of basically our values on each pixel, <laughs> so we could pull out the ones we wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So we had one thing we couldn't accomplish in the end, and that was to, we still had ones near the edge were too heavily weighted towards the null, null values or the zeros. So we wanted to go back to the original image and pull out the central one again for the ones that were, just to get rid of some of the more black dots, remove a little bit more of the issue that yeah. was happening. And the challenge was we, we decided we wanted to do it only with, with you know, normal transformers. Because Takashi, of course, already has a really nice transformer that has uh, uses Python and uh, also does does median and everything, but uh. yeah. <laughs> so this one is faster, but it doesn't use and it doesn't yeah. use Python. Yeah, although it's not that fast on your machine, but uh, no. on my was like two seconds gone. But. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, we got the the median <laughs> yeah the median filter. Yeah. That was the median. Cool. I'm going to put it on after me. I'll uh, polish it up a bit so that you have to you also increase the window size and. Yeah. Okay, okay, so. Uh, no minutes left. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Is this a two-part thing? Or? Well, you did your own thing. <laughs> but you, but Dean, <laughs> Dean left early, so he was, he was afraid that we couldn't finish anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So in other words, this, you guys still have... He did a, he did a heat map and still... Oh, we're doing two things here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just, so which, what happened to this one game? team? Yeah, I thought I, we would just do it all under one team, yeah. If I can find your desktop. <laughs> where, where did this... I can't even see your desktop. Your okay, I got an idea. We'll do the second part of this team later, because we're going to take... Uh, let's take uh, like a 10-minute break, because it is now noon. So we'll take a 10-minute break. Um, if I don't have your stuff yet and you still want to present, catch me in this 10-minute break. We'll let Dean restart. Can you? Are you around? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll let Dean continue after the 10-minute break. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Lots of great You're stuff. Welcome. Fantastic. Okay, so this was sort of our plan B in case plan A didn't work. And so I thought it'd be cool to have a, a heat map. And uh, so Essentially, all I did was two quick steps. The first thing was just I needed some points, so I took our training data and uh, used a geocoder to dump that out and you know, make it into points. And then what the heat map does is essentially do some point cloud stuff. Uh, uh, Dimitri's favorite transformer, which is the point cloud merger, to essentially stack points, stack all the, uh, you give it a grid cell size, stacks the points, counts the height of the stack. So I'll just let this thing run, and then I'll use the rest of my time until I run out uh, to explain what's going on. So that's the heat map. I don't have very interesting data. There's not enough data points there. This, like I said, it's just from the training data. But you can see there's the points, and I have a couple of different ways of stacking it. So uh, I could just do a straight up numeric rasterizer, which is a little more accurate or I can do a surface generalization, or I like the combined option. So this, essentially it's doing a bit of surface modeling and preserving the, the highest points of the direct coercion. So this is, because it's using point clouds, you could probably throw it a whole whack of points and it would be fine. So uh, this will hopefully, will these workspaces be up somewhere that people can download from? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, you can always get a hold of me, Dean at Safe, I don't have any slides. So Dean, let's see if you can get a hold of it. So just in the minute I have left, I'll just highlight. So I'm basically just converting to point cloud. This is one of Dimitri's tricks where basically I take the, uh, the grid size. So there's a, the only published parameter on this guy is the, um, 
is the heat cell size. I didn't. I just left it all in lat long, like I can run it again. And uh, so what that does is basically that's your grid cell size. So you round all your points so that all you know the x y's are in that grid cell size. And then what happens with the point cloud merger is it gets rid of all of the dupl duplicate points and adds those things as components. And the nice little thing, and this took me a bit of digging, I actually had to read docs to solve this. Uh, I banged my head for a while until I finally found the <coughs> reference count, which is the component that is added by the point cloud merger that gives you that number. Um, and that, that becomes the height of my uh, DEM or my rasterizer. So that's it, that's heat map. Actually, sorry, we're going to take, um, where do you go? Yeah, sorry, uh, these guys, yeah. I took, yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, this one, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay, so five minutes, if we can. And five minutes. <laughs> uh, uh, dragon. Team Dragon. Team Woo! Dragon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, first, of all, first of all, I, I uh, introduce some uh, background of our Hexen. Uh, big date is coming, and uh, in China, there is a three word uh, is very popular, uh, AI, uh, big, uh, big data, and uh, cloud uh, computing. Uh, that is the word ABC is very popular. Uh, you know, uh, there are uh, 1.7 billion uh, citizens in China. There is a uh, produce very more uh, data in every day. And uh, we have uh, uh, s uh, 70 million smartphones users. So we uh, produce the mobile phone signal and uh, other big data. Uh, there is a use case, uh, our FME, one of our uh, uh, client that is uh, Shanghai city plan and uh, land uh, management uh, bureau. Uh, they built uh, a big uh, data uh, research uh, laboratory last year uh, when uh, one of our support team used FME. So uh, <coughs> uh, there is a, uh, Shanghai city is a famous uh, mo modern uh, city in China. Uh, they have uh, uh, 20 uh, million uh, uh, citizenship in this city. Uh, and uh, we process the taxes uh, uh, data in per day. Uh, that uh, uh, 20 million records of taxi location per day. That is the two uh, thousand files. Uh, we just uh, uh, track the the point and uh, make make the ta uh, tax traffic. So the use this data they want to research and. Uh, uh, can support their uh, make a best decision. So that's the detail of the. And so, how can we uh, resolve this problem? And uh, uh, this is uh, and uh, sometimes we may think this is a, a, a non-spatial da data. So we want to translate to uh, translate this file to uh, task nine and. So we usually use a CSV reader, and then we use a, a sorter uh, by group by the text ID, and then we point do point connector to uh, product the nine. But uh, mm, when we use this method, we found it's very very slow. Uh, when we use this uh, uh, workspace to uh, per to do some workspace, um, it, it spend uh, about uh, one day, and then we can get uh, uh, the result. So um, the customer feel this, uh, um, this speed is very slow, so uh, we try to, uh, try to use uh, uh, another method. When, uh, after I read the blog uh, from Safe Software about uh, uh, treat data as the point cloud, and uh, so I use another method to uh, read the file as point cloud. Then we use the point cloud sorter and point cloud uh, filter and to do this uh, uh, 
problem. And we found the point cloud uh, sorter may be more faster than the transformer sorter. So this uh, was uh, mm, this can um, quick uh, faster. Uh, it, uh, it may uh, about uh, four to four point five hours. Uh, so over five times faster. Um, this is a, uh, this is our traditional method. So we use CSV and then use point cloud connector. And uh, um, last night, um, uh, Hexen, uh, we um, we want to make the workspace to more faster. So I uh, uh, I want to know uh, how can I do parallel processor on FME server using multiple engine to do this work. And uh, I tried last year, um, but uh, uh, and when we know when we want to uh, run this workspace on the FM server, we used to write out the read read again. Uh, um, last year I I have read a workspace, but I write out the file uh, as X Y Z format. Then last night uh, Dale gave me some some advice. He told me. X, Y, Z may be very slow, uh, so you can use FFS format to to instead, and uh, so your uh, speed may be more faster. So uh, I use uh, this method to try uh, to try to solve this problem, and uh, we do some uh, we do some test last night, and we just use 20, 20 files about. Uh, 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 40 files, about 1 million uh, 87,000 records. And then uh, this is my workspace. Uh, uh, I have modified the format right out. Uh, and this is, uh, we compare the result. When, when we use XY format, uh, about uh, 40 files, and we use two engines on the FM server about uh, 40 seconds, um, but we use FFS. It can be reduced to 20, 23 seconds, about uh, okay, okay, about 42 percent up. So we we will try to uh, do some more testing uh, when we go back. So that's all. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and of course we've seen that a few times, haven't we? How point, using point cloud processing for non-spatial data makes it really fast, so that's great. Okay, so next, what was Team Dragon that was, right? Yeah, Dragon, all right. Oops, hang on. You guys need, so five minutes. We're really gonna have to stick to five minutes, and so Aaron back there is gonna be enforcing the five minute. Oh, that is you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the blue box coming in, guys. So we're Team Bridge. The U.S. federal government is kind enough to uh, publish uh, bridge inventories um, just in an older CSV format. So uh, we cooked up a reader for that CSV format to output it to um, uh, G JSON? Actually, it's it's a text. It's a kind of a encrypted yeah, text we'll format. Yeah, we'll call it. We'll call it. It's a, like an ASCII format. Um, so we made a reader for that uh, for that ASCII format, um, and it cleans it up, does a little processing. It's a little it's a little janky, but you know all the states are represented. There's a lot of really good information in there. Ken, where, where did you put that? Where did you put those files? Oh. Um, so. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, sorry. I project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what up, guys? Um, so uh, we have this, uh, we, we chunked this um, kind of funky little uh, text-based ASCII format. Um, it has actually a lot of great information in there. Um, you know, number of bridge lanes, how old the bridge is, how, how structurally sound the bridge is. Um, it's actually a really good uh, database. It's just a little bit harder to read because it's older. Because um, bridges are old. Um, I don't know if any of you ever used bridges before, but um, I like them. Um, 
<clears throat> I'm stretching fantastically. I had the I had the the blue box sound. I had this whole bridge joke. It's going really well. Um, What's my favorite bridge? Um, Lionsgate, Lionsgate. I'll just pander. I can pander for a minute. No problem. Uh, I think we also emailed so, you. So yeah, KML. It's a, the the Federal Highway um, Division makes this crazy text file format, and uh, we've always wanted to sort of uh, get it in the to our systems. And no, you just. Uh, so what I basically did was. Um, I've always wanted to make a, a, a custom format. I've done a lot of C++ formats, but uh, this one was kind of easy. It just wraps the text writer, text reader, and. Um, okay, so yeah, we have our uh, we have our bridge info, info here. Um, uh, as you can see, it has a lot of stuff. This one's from '83 um, levels of service. So we could do a quick QC uh, in our application here. Um, so this bridge, as you can see, is a lot of traffic. We've got three lanes, looks like. And one of these fields in here has um, historical significance. Nobody cares about that. Um, design load was five. The toll, one of these is lanes. Number of lanes. There's a lot of parametric information in there. So they, they are points, but it, it would be possible uh, to, to sort of stretch it and, and uh, snap it to a road. And, uh, Somebody see lanes? Come up with something 3D. Lanes. And there's there's structural. Uh, anyway, yeah, we've also. got a uh, structure. It's it's got there's a lot of great data in here, but we can we can QC it. And we have you know we did like D the DC area, so there's just a lot of great data in there. And um, anyway, the 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 readers, as you might imagine, is a little boring. There's a a big attribute splitter and some renaming and um, uh, but it's nice to be able to just have that reader as a new format. And to be able to, um, uh, you know, write it to anything. Um, this is called the in. No. Huh? They want that tag. Oh, sorry. How about? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Right here. Uh, uh. Right. So um, yeah, the for like I said, the format uh, was kind of ASCII based. It's sort of, um, you could call it a REST API uh, by today, but I'm pretty sure it predates REST <laughs> APIs. Um, the, it's roughly. Uh, so here's what, here's what it looks like. It's, it's, it's a cr sort of a yeah. crazy cryptic format. So but you, you might imagine. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, every row is. Specific is it, format. yeah, it's fixed widths, but as you, it's, it's quote unquote a REST API with um, location, year, um, you know, rest, so resty. Very old school, so yeah. Kind of for an old dog. <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, so team name again was Bridge. 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 Oh yeah, got that. And okay. I'll put that on the, uh, the FME hub. Uh, yes. <laughs> you want your PPT open? Sure. All right, you're up. Team name. Team name, Project 2 Team. Boring. <laughs> and team, uh, by the way, my name is Bob Wall from Tested Research. This is uh, Dan Wing from the Southern. Southern Gas Company? So, Gas Company. Oh, thank you. Okay. Southern Gas Company. And um, we were looking at the uh, list of challenges, and we picked, hmm, the second one is, is the boringest. <laughs> <laughs> So we picked that, and um, here we go. LRS route calibration. How many of you ever heard about LRS? Know what LRS are all about? Oh, only a handful, so it deserves some explanation. So route calibration. You might not want to use your th um, That's okay. To LRS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we have that dissertation here presented. Okay, all right, here is, is a polyline. And you have the nodes and vertices, right? And now we have the calibration points with measure. The task is to transfer, first transfer the measurement 
of those calibration points to the cor corresponding nodes and also inserting additional vertex into the system, uh, into the route. So you have the calibration points, snap the points on the route, and also original vertices of the route. So the strategy is first is to snap the end calibration points uh, to the end nodes of the route segment. The second is to snap non-node points to the closest points. Now, again, the strategy is closest points on the route. Okay, so the, uh, in between. Then transfer the measure. The third is proportionally assign vertex measures between adjacent snapped calibration points. Key transforms used. Old school, right? Boring. <laughs> There's no API, it does not call your cell phone. <laughs> There's no ding and dong and dancing, what have you. And if Don's here, he will say, there's no XML on the surface. But we did it. And this, in fact, is one of the, um, one of the more challenging uh, uh, algorithm or, or capabilities, and it's being widely asked for. That's the reason I think it's listed as number one because no many people actually attacked it. We did it. And this one shows the, um, the snap point, which is black, having the measure exactly as what's listed on the calibration points. And this shows the end points. The measurement gets successfully transferred. And design features, multi-segment routes supported, bulk calibration routes supported, user-defined tolerance supported. Not exactly all tested, though. That's just like any software, including safe software sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Enhancements, validation, and error log. And the final words. Final words. OK. All right. Yeah, we are a boring team with a boring name. However, many interesting technology is built upon seemingly boring technologies. And this is one of the most fundamental components in LRS. So please vote for us. The boring <laughs> one. So to vote for them, that team name one more time was? Project 2 Team. And I can confirm this has been asked for a lot. Have you showed this to Mark Stokes, by the way? He would love to see that. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to apologize right now because I'm pretty sure we're going to run out of time for all the teams. M Michael, you're ready to go? We'll bring you up and um, did you send me something or yes, I did. did I? You, you replied. Even. I replied, so that's uh, usually a pretty good sign. What was it? So with the date, you know. Uh, eight minutes, okay. How m who else is, has to present? Two. All right, it's almost possible. Lars and, uh, okay. So if you can, <laughs> yeah, if you can do it in three minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Evamy Home License Unboxing. Uh, this past days, I really love the Evamy family, and I really like to keep keep it growing. More people using Evamy, and actually, the uh, one of the thing that happened is the Evamy Home License because we can get Evamy into the homes of people. And what happens when you get good things in homes of people? they take it into their offices again. So when they are at home and using the product and they see what benefits it can have within their organizations and they start using it and that we can grow our, uh, our FME community on it. So how can we really get the FME home license going? It's, it's passion. What's people's passion about? And actually my passion is photography and in the Northern America part, there are about 150,000 professional photographers. But in the world, there are about 2.1 billion people making photographs with, with normal cameras, and about three times as much with their mobile cell phones. 
And actually, when we get, can get these people using FME, then we really can make it growing. So we, we start using it at home, and then we'll get it into the offices and get it going. Um, what Kevin and Jackie did yesterday with, together with me, uh, well, we thought, what's the real problem and with photography? Uh, maybe you can reckon that your battery dies on your camera and the dates, it's not there anymore. So people need date shifters. And there are some good applications around, but they're just one-shot one applications to shift dates. But there's not a good middle thing. And actually, there are very good APIs around, but they're very hard because you need coding. And actually, that's where FME comes in. So my suggestion is that we can add a category category of uh, photo processing to it. For example, a photo date shifter transformer, a photo face recognizer, a photo OCR application, uh, a photo organizer, or a photo watermarking. Well, there are lots of transformers we can think of which can get to the 2.1 million photographers and they start using FME. We did some uh, tests on it, so this is, this is what we wanted to add, and we did some uh, work yesterday uh, and we, we with the latest transformers it's really possible actually I did the past couple of months I did my reorganization of my own photo stock with FME so it's really a great tool to do your photo things so let's unleash the dragon let's open up the box let's start the world using FME as a tool to do their photo work and vote for the FME unboxing and let, the, <laughs> let our family grow because it's a lovely family. No, you convinced me that is a problem we all have. And uh, so you got them all done in those two hours? All those transformers? Yeah. So <laughs> Lar Okay, so Lars. Right Thanks. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, we've got to do the old uh, don't show the whole world ice cream trick. Or did I? When you were standing there, did I? No. Dun, dun, don't make me who's, who's the other one that we're still... And do I have your stuff? Yep. Can you come back? Yeah, just, sure. just while this down... Come on up, guys, and then... Because you guys are just one browser window. Yeah. And Lars is taking a sec to download. It won't take too long. There we go. Yeah. Uh, we'll the screen. Oh. So what's your team name, guys? Uh, FMEI for the well-dressed person. <laughs> FMEI? Is that? Yeah. yeah. It's a play on a TV show, if you guys remember. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so what we did was we wanted to get an email dropped to us every morning to tell us what to wear, because um, I'm too lazy to look out the window. Um, so uh, what we did was we, I don't want to input any location or anything, so we just wanted an email that runs like as so. And... Hopefully this will show. <laughs> so we ran it, we put it up onto the cloud in case any of you guys want to know what you need to wear tomorrow. Oh, there's an error. <laughs> yeah, now it runs an error, why? Okay. And you can also input your horoscope for daily inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> so it outputs an HTML report which tells you the weather. Oh, there we go. Oh, it gives you a nice little message and then it gives you a selection of clothing. <laughs> okay, so it's random. You, we, it, it runs on Google Sheets, so it connects up to Google Sheets where you input oh, your, your wardrobe according yeah, to... Um, <laughs> we can run it again. You put in your wardrobe according to uh, weather temperature ranges. So, um, and then it will give you your full uh, outfit for the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't so this up. is the floral tank top option <laughs> with the skirt um, and the FME socks and uh, the Tilly hat. So, yep. So uh, what we did was we stole our IP address and then with the IP address we we spatialized that point and we used the open weather uh, tran uh, transformer and we grabbed the weather and we had a sheet that we had a date range of uh, temperature range where we thought it was appropriate to wear what, and we randomized that list, and we grabbed images from, that, from those. If anybody knows how we can automatically do Google searches and pull out one image, that would be the next step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
that, that is all. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Team name, I got FMEI. FMEI. I'm going to pop up the voting link again. So this will be up shortly. Is that one more thing you got? Lars, yep. Can you do it one minute or not? Okay. Go very quickly. You have a few um, slides, but. Where did I put it? Go very quickly. But what I was trying to do, because when you use RTS online, very, very many of us use domains. And when you use the RTS online reader currently, no domains are uh, coming back. So I wanted to, to create a custom transformer that gives me the, the true values and not codes. Um, so my first idea was get the token, then get the domains, connect domains to attribute read surface and replace the values. So get token, very nice. I tried to use the REST API, struggled for an hour and a half and didn't get my token. And then I thought, oh shit. I wrote a blog about this 15 years ago, uh, three, sorry, 15 years, back in 2014, and it just took me five minutes to go off, but uh, well, the hackathon was halfway back then. So a uh, little shout out to Don. I got the domains and the fields. Time was up, but I still want to process continue, so I got uh, a temporary workbench that uh, got two outputs currently uh, showing the domains because every domain is, uh, that's locked, uh, connected to an attribute will show up. So uh, I got this very bad table with uh, a domain used 10 times. So uh, try to uh, get just the domains, just the attributes where the domain should be connected to. And well, the next step would be uh, hooking them onto the true surface and then passed through, through values on. So still got to do, connect to actually unknown attributes, so that will be uh, a bit of a challenge. Build a custom transformer and upload it to the hub. So that was it, thank you. Team name again was? Uh, I don't have any team domain. Oh, I put your first name. Oh yeah, okay. very nice. So, <laughs> so we better go get our picture. Where's the picture thing happening, Jen? Okay, uh, we'll have at to go. The, uh, corner, uh, yeah. the back corner. Amazing. The That's all I'm going to say. Fabulous. Awesome stuff. Really.